Hey guys, this is my life after terzepatide two month update. I have been off terzepatide for two months and I'm doing good. I have not gained any weight. Certain things are harder this month that I do want to talk about. I also want to talk about how I'm coping and my maintenance strategies and plans. So this month, I did notice a little more hunger. So I do think that the final bit of terzepatide that was still built up in my system after, you know, six months on the medication was like finally getting gone. And I feel like my coping strategies that I have in place were all still working and it was all manageable, except it was harder around my cycle. So the couple days before my cycle started and the first couple days of my cycle, I was just, you know, the hunger, you know, the hunger felt less manageable. And I was honestly a little thrown off by it because I felt like, okay, these lifestyle changes that I made, you know, were helping me cope so well and they do help me cope so well and they are great and I do stand by them. But I was really struggling, you know, those like maybe four or five days. And I did read the book Fast Like a Girl, and it talks specifically about intermittent fasting, but it also kind of explains the different hormones that are present in a woman's body during the different times of her cycle. And so I also tried to not sweat it too terribly much. So if during that period of time I need to eat a little more and maybe need to eat a little more carbs specifically, because I really try to do a low carb, high protein diet. And I also normally try to do intermittent fasting, but I know from that book to shorten or eliminate intermittent fasting during that just short period of time in the month. And so I just kind of allowed myself extra grace those days. And I was up a couple pounds during those days, but then after my cycle was done or just like a couple days after it started, I got back to the intermittent fasting, the high protein diet, just kind of got right back to it. And within a few days, those pounds were gone. So I don't know if those were water weights, um, if I actually, you know, did gain a couple and then lose them, but everything is back to normal. I am at the same weights that I was at when I took my last appetite shot. So I think for me as a woman who still has cycles, I do have a hormonal IUD, but um, I do get cycles. I think I just need to allow myself a little more grace while trying not to go too crazy. A big update this month also is that I was diagnosed with sleep apnea. So I noticed really this month when I was waking up in the morning, I just felt so crummy. I felt like I had gotten no sleep the night before, even though I had been in bed nine hours. And I was like, you know what? That's how I felt like before my GLP-1 therapy. And I wonder if now that the medicine is completely out of my system that this is coming back because GLP-1 therapy can help with sleep apnea. And so I sent a message to my primary care doctor. I was like, hey, can I get a sleep test? And so she ordered me a home sleep test and I got the home sleep test. You download an app with it. It sends the results in and they called me and they were like, yeah, you have sleep apnea. You have mild to moderate sleep apnea. So it's great to know that. And so I've been using a night guard and my sleep has really improved since using the night guard. Now me personally, I'm not like I need to get back on a GLP one just for my mild to moderate sleep apnea. I'd rather treat my sleep apnea with something else. So if the night guard's working, that's great. But I think this therapy is what helps me like find out that about myself, which this has really been helping me with my chronic fatigue. Now I wanna talk about the specific coping and maintenance strategies that I'm continuing to use to maintain my weight loss. I feel like my biggest tool in my shed is intermittent fasting. It's been so helpful to me. There's real science behind it. I know different people feel different about intermittent fasting. I just usually stick to a 14 to 16 intermittent fast. I follow the kind of strategy behind the book, Fast Like a Girl. So I try to do my long fasts early in my cycle. So maybe I start that a couple of days after I've started my period and more of those long fasts um, in those kind of first two, three weeks. And then the days before my period starts and maybe the day or two after it starts, I do shorter fasts and that works really well for me and my body. I think trying to do longer fasts during um, that progesterone pike phase around when your cycle is about to start can stress out the body and it kind of stresses me out. My body does not like to do long fasts around that time, but it does seem to do well with long fasts after that. And for me, it, doing the long fast after that, after my cycle has started for a couple of days, helps me lose any <laughs> weights that I might have gained during, you know, that hormonal surge. I find that on the days when I am trying to do a longer fast, 
that if I just during the day I hit my protein goals, so have at least 90 to 100 grams of protein during my day, it's really not that hard. I just try to kind of avoid the kitchen after dinner. I don't eat after dinner and then have water and black coffee in the morning. And not long after that, I've hit 15 or 16 hours and I'm ready to eat. So it's not terribly hard for me um, during this time of the month when I am trying to do my longer fast. Intermittent fasting is so helpful to me as someone who's can be kind of prone to overeating because it just limits my eating into a window. So if I'm having three high protein meals a day, then that really does not leave much room in my belly for snacking and much time for snacking. And so if I do need an afternoon snack, I usually have like an afternoon snack. I just try to have it one that's high in protein and that just kind of keeps the satiety usually under control. The diet I try to follow is a high protein diet. I have learned to eat more meats. So I was someone who just out of personal preference kind of ate less meat kind of ate more carbs. And as someone who has hormonal issues, PCOS, that's not great for my body. So I really need more protein. I need a high protein, low carb diet. And so I've learned to have significant sources of protein, hopefully at all my meals. And so I'm talking at least 20 grams, hopefully 40 grams ish. And so I've just kind of had to learn to change my diet to be a diet that is better for my specific body and that's better for my weights. Now I do try to also get those veggies in. I try to avoid sugar around that time of the month. It gets a little hard. I allow myself some chocolate, but for the most part, I avoid sugar. I don't use creamer in my coffee anymore. I just do the black coffee thing. Different people can do that. I'll do eat fruit sometimes. I try to do low carb, not no carb. So having you know some rice in my diet or some gluten-free bread here and there, as long as I'm having a significant protein source and some fiber with it. Just lately, I've been really trying to look at less processed food. Um, that's something in my diet I think I could continue to improve on, but I haven't gone too crazy with that because it really is hard at this stage of life when I have two little kids and everything to not, you know, need something packaged to grab and go. But that is a health goal I have for my future to kind of have less processed food. My exercise, I did bump up my strength training. So now I do Pilates twice a week a weight routine once a week and then every other day that I can I do at least like a 30 minute walk. Before I was doing Pilates once a week and a weight routine once a week so now I do Pilates twice a week and weights once a week so hopefully three days a week I'm doing some active strength training to improve my body. Regular strength training and a high protein diet is just fabulous for your metabolism and we want to keep this metabolism kicking. So to sum it up I think I'm doing well. Certain things are harder off the medication, like around my cycle, it is harder to um, not think about food all the time. I definitely have more food noise than it's just harder during that hormonal time. But I still am glad I got off the medication. You know, two days out of the week, I would just feel a little off while I was on it. And I seem to be maintaining my weights off the medication. So I am glad, you know, if I don't have to be on this, I'm glad that I'm not. So, so far, I am glad that I did, you know, a shorter six month therapy and just took that time to totally improve my health and change my lifestyle and, and improve my metabolism and hormonal health and then get off of it. So, so far I'm happy with my decision. I'm really glad I was diagnosed with sleep apnea and that I'm treating that now. I don't think I would know that without my GLP-1 therapy. So that's just like an extra bonus. Let me know if you have any questions for me or where you're at in your journey. The telehealth I used was Join Fridays. Join Fridays is a great GLP-1 telehealth. I was super happy with them. I'll have info about Join Fridays in the description box and my discount code with them is Madison. Feel free to leave me a comment if you have any questions or if you just wanna let me know where you're at with your journey, if you're thinking about getting off of it. If you have any questions for me, feel free to leave that in the comment section. Please give this video a thumbs up if you found it helpful and remember to subscribe to my channel if you have not already.